what we see as space time in my mind is, and there is a lot of evidence for it, is made of something like what I would call the atoms of space. So technically, you would call it microscopic degrees of freedom. Let us go back to, again, a couple of centuries. And suppose I give you a glass of water and you want to know what it is made of. You might have thought that you need experiments working at angstrom scales to discover that the water is made of atoms. This is complete nonsense. You don't need that. If I give you a glass of water, and if you are as clever as Boltzmann, the Austrian physicist, you could have said that it is made of atoms because you can heat water. When you are heating water, you are putting energy into water. And the water must have a way of storing this energy. If it does not have this way of storing the energy, it cannot exhibit heat phenomena or thermal phenomena. So the very fact that matter exhibits thermal phenomena tells you that matter is made of atoms. Again, I'm going to use the word atoms when I mean microscopic degrees of freedom. Okay, So it is made of atoms. In the same way, we now understand that space, or better still, space-time, exhibits thermal phenomena. It has temperature, and it has another quantity called the entropy. Roughly speaking, entropy measures the level of disorder in a system. And for uh, normal material, the temperature multiplied by entropy gives you the amount of heat content. This room, at this place, at this point, the space-time has a temperature. I'm not talking about the temperature of this atmosphere or the gas. The space-time here has a temperature for certain observers. This was first shown in the context of black holes. So people thought that black holes are some esoteric objects and uh, they have a temperature and they have an entropy and they thought it is a very special kind of a thing. But very soon, and this, result, this is the celebrated result of Stephen Hawking and Jacob Bekenstein. Now, very soon, uh, just a couple of years after that, two gentlemen, Paul Davis and Bill Andrew, showed that the result is much more general. And I consider that to be the most beautiful result which we have in putting principles of quantum mechanics and gravity together. What it tells you is that if you have an observer who cannot see beyond a particular region, it is like you are standing at a seashore and there is a horizon beyond which you cannot see. And so that is regions of space becomes inaccessible to the observer. Now, if something is inaccessible, you lack information about that region. The concept of entropy in thermodynamics, what I call the disorder, what does disorder mean? Disorder means that you can, it is not ordered, which means that you do not have precise information about it. If you have a street and the houses are ordered, one, two, three, like that, then you have precise information as to where the number eight house is located. But suppose, imagine a street in which the numbers are completely disordered. There are cities like that, okay? And then if you want to go to the number eight house, you have to check each house. So the disorder immediately implies lack of information. And lack of information and disorder and entropy are closely connected. So the moment an observer does not have information, he will attribute certain amount of entropy to that horizon. Now, if you take space and you postulate that there are atoms of space because space can be hot and it can have entropy and it can have temperature, then the next question to ask is, can you do better? Now, it turns out that you can do vastly better. First of all, you can reformulate the entire theory of gravity because Einstein's equation, the way Einstein wrote it down, is geometrical. It, it sort of deals with geometrical variables of the space and time. But if gravity is thermodynamic, you should be able to write down the same equations in completely thermodynamic language. If in a particular region in space, I'm talking about normal three-dimensional region in space here, and uh, let us take this region. There is a three-dimensional region bounded by a two-dimensional surface. If there is some amount of gravitating energy inside this region, and there is some amount of degrees of freedom on the surface, it turns out that if nothing is changing with time, the number of degrees of freedom, or rather the number of atoms of space on the surface, and the number of normal atoms which is inside, which is providing the gravity, has to be equal. This is a remarkable result because it, first of all, connects 
properties of a bulk region with the properties of the surface. This goes under the name holography. Then you can go and ask, what if these are not equal? Suppose the number of atoms of space on the surface and the number of atoms of matter in the bulk are not equal. Then things cannot be static. The geometry there starts evolving. It sort of, it gets either heated up or cooled down. And you can write down an equation for that. What is remarkable is that this equation turns out to be identical to Einstein's equation. So you can reformulate entire Einstein's theory in completely thermodynamic uh, terms. And you can think in terms of time development of a space time as heating or cooling of the microscopic degree separate. Any good theory should tell you something new. And this theory does. It actually solves what many people consider to be uh, the important problem in theoretical physics, namely the cosmological constant problem. So the cosmological constant is a term in Einstein's equation, which can drive the universe, ex make the universe expand with acceleration. Now, where does this cosmological constant come from? It is fundamentally linked to the number of underlying degrees of freedom in the universe. That is what fixes the value of the cosmological constant. So it gives you, in some sense, a quantum gravitational explanation for the cosmological constant and gives its numerical value. There could be different phases of, uh, just like you have different phases of matter, like ice, water, and water vapor, the atoms of space can also reconfigure themselves in different phases. And so far, we have seen only one equilibrium phase in the universe. All our cosmological observations span up to some length scale, and the evidence is consistent with it being described by Einstein's theory. But that does not mean that there, are, there is no other phase outside. And that is where I think another test, of, almost all the tests of this approach to quantum gravity is going to be cosmological. Because that is the only place where we can beat the smallness of the Planck scale by the uh, largeness of the universe. And I, I believe that is the right way to investigate this.